Hello, hello, welcome to this video, welcome to my studio. In today's video, I thought I'd do a couple of things. I'd show you my current sketchbook and maybe talk you through some of the things that I'm doing in my sketchbook, some of the ways in which I use a sketchbook, how it supports my art practice. I also thought I would do a little bit of painting with ink, just some really loose, expressive, playful experiments really with ink. And I've been out of action for two weeks, so yesterday was the first day I came back to my studio. And I haven't done anything in my sketchbook, I haven't done anything creative at all. And so there's been this sort of enforced pause. That's made me think actually how do I kind of rekindle that creative energy? How do I find a spark after having not done anything at all for weeks? So that's where I'm at. So I just thought I would take you with me as I look back through my sketchbook, try and pick up some threads, see some of the things that were exciting me and interesting me before I was poorly, then just play with some ink with no expectation of outcome. Something quite spontaneous, that's what I'm looking for. I'm wanting something quick, playful, instant gratification where I can feel like I've done something. This sketchbook that I'm currently working in is from a brand called Dela Rowney. It's an English brand and I've been doing all sorts in this sketchbook. It's so eclectic, all over the place, all over the shop. And that's fine, I don't mind that. <laughs> And here on this first page, I have written a little note to myself, a kind of reminder, something to jog my memory every time I open my sketchbook. And I've called this the book of joy and delight. And that doesn't mean I think that you will find my book joyful and delightful. This is more about how do I want my art to feel to me? How do I want to feel when I'm making it? What am I seeking in my art? And when I think about that, a sketchbook for me is always about discovery and development, but sometimes it's also about reflecting what I want in my life, what I want in my art, and exploring. And I find it quite helpful to articulate to myself how I want my art to feel. And in this season of my life, and at this point, I want my art and art making to feel joyful and delightful. I want to really celebrate the joy of art supplies, of art materials, of having a blank notebook that then turns into something alive with mark and colour and shape. I want to have fun in my sketchbook and I want to seek joyful, delightful things and do more of them. This little kind of, you know, the book of joy and delight is just a note to myself. I often think that art is really a reflection of who we are. It's us expressing ourselves, interpreting the world, understanding our place in the world, who we are, what we think, what we believe. I find it really helpful to think about that actually. <laughs> and in my life at the moment, I am seeking joy and delight. I am coming out of a few years of real joylessness <laughs> and very undelightfulness. I often think that what I seek in life is what I seek in my art. <laughs> And I've sort of, you know, set the intention. So joy and delight is my intention. So I started this sketchbook on the 10th of January. My sketchbooks, I don't tend to date every page, but I date the start and finish date of the sketchbook. So at least I've got a vague idea of the season of my creativity that it represents. And here I've been using quite a lot of acrylic paint. So this is quite a matte acrylic paint. It's from a brand called Sennelier. And some pencil a bit of collage, sticking things in, mixing things up. I think sketchbooks are a great place to explore mixing different materials and really understand how they work together and the different qualities and sensibilities of different materials together. So I really like paint, drawn details and more definite collage pieces all on one page. Lots of pattern and colour and a recurring theme is always trees, vases, vessels. And I'm actually really enjoying this page here. This page was the really the starting point for some paintings that I've been working on this year. This totemic kind of shape right in the centre of the page and some of the line detail coupled with some of the colours really inspired some of the paintings I've been working on. So this is one of the paintings that I was working on. Big, colourful, magical tree, acrylic paint, 
on paper lots of layers of paint lots of detail and you might be able to see where my sketchbook has really given me some ideas for the shapes pattern and decoration that's within this painting so my sketchbooks tend to really support everything that i do outside of my sketchbooks here's another one completely different kind of sort of colors So these paintings are finished now, but what I tend to do is just live with them for a little while, a couple of weeks, just so that I can make the decision that they are finished. I often find a little space and a little distance just helps me to see things that might need changing or to make any alterations, any of those kind of small little tweaks that happen at the very end stages of a painting. Having not looked at these for a couple of weeks, I can see them now with sort of fresh eyes and I think they are finished paintings now. And these pages are acrylic paint with pencil and felt tip pen. Oh yeah, and then this page, I've actually stuck some extra pages in to make this kind of slightly concertinery or fold out. I really love monochrome next to maxichrome. And so I was just playing about, <laughs> enjoying myself. This is acrylic paint. I've got a demo on this page if you're interested in it. I'll put a link. And then this was another sort of thinking through different ideas and shapes. Hopefully you can see how these sorts of ideas influenced the paintings I've been working on. I often take something from my sketchbook. So often if I'm stuck in a painting or I'm working on something and I need some ideas, this is like a safety deposit box that I can kind of go back through and pick out little threads or ideas. Lots of drawing. These are just done with a Pentel pocket brush pen. This page was a massive fly. I've been thinking about what I loved to draw as a child. I loved drawing insects, butterflies, flowers, patterns, nothing changes really. Decorative trees. I, I think this is going to turn into a painting. I kind of get a sense that there's something going on here that I'm going to translate. And here too. So just drawing, mixing materials here. Oh, and a bit of bananas. I was using crayon and acrylic paint. There's something quite exuberant about it. And here I was using ink tense pencils. I think it's a felt tip pens. And here I really fell down a rabbit hole of using a 9B pencil and just doing really decorative ornate detailed drawings and actually I forgot how much I love using a pencil and I really like the softest pencil available so I, I buy boxes of 9b pencils where that's the only pencil in the box or the only type of pencil in the box because I do go through them and then this was a drawing that I did yesterday of candelabra or candlestick from memory this is the object I'm using for inspiration, it is a junk shop candlestick candelabra that I got from my brother or sister-in-law in our £10 secret centre where we have to buy something from a charity shop or junk shop. And I've had it for several years and it sits in my dining room and I really like it as an object. But I've never drawn it other than yesterday where I sort of did a drawing from memory of it. But now I have the actual thing here in front of me and I thought I might just get some scrap paper, some black Indian ink, a selection of paintbrushes and just do quick, speedy studies. Something to get my hand back in. Something playful, low pressure, not expecting anything of anything to come from it, but just something to get the ball rolling and to get me back in a little bit of flow and see where it goes. This is A3 size 
it's probably 160 or 200 GSM. I buy big packets of Fabriano academia paper, school paper, education paper, which is really lovely quality, but is not massively expensive here in the UK. So it means that I can use this paper and not feel too precious about it. It's not a super expensive quality paper that I feel like I have to make something precious on. And I've got some Indian ink, a big bottle of Indian ink from Jackson's Art, some clean water, I've put some of this ink in just a little ramekin so it's easy to access and I've got a selection of brushes and I'm just going to start I'm just gonna do the quickest of responses to my candelabra and I'm gonna try to be loose not be precious just to have a kind of fun playful approach to the item without thinking that I've got to create something lovely or beautiful. I don't really think that this is what I want to do here. I just want to do something fun and playful. And I'm holding the brush right at the end. I'm sort of giving up some of the control. I sort of think of this as a dancing dance an item that dances i'm going to add in a little bit of water just to make this ink flow around and explore some of these shapes <laughs> just, just looking at it i've realized how much this looks like a tree this candelabra i'm obsessed with trees so I'm just sort of exploring how the ink and the water interact, enjoying the qualities of the material, embracing the drips, wanting to be loose, working at speed. Not really worrying if what's on my page looks like what's happening in the candlestick. I'm thinking of the candlestick more as a sort of gateway, a doorway, a starting point, something to guide me, not something that I have to kind of religiously copy. And I might do five or six or more of these kind of quick studies. I'm adding more water to the ink that's already here. I smudge things a little bit. I'm wanting a feeling of looseness and freedom and I'm not really wanting to be too prescriptive about what I'm doing. Enjoying the book and the water. And that might be my first one, my first go. <laughs> I'm just going to put that one over here. And then I might try a different brush with the next one and see what happens. So I'm just really wanting to, I guess, pay attention to the qualities of the line that I'm enjoying. I like doing these kind of exercises, you know, giving myself a little creative task. Something small and easy <laughs> to get me going. I'm liking these big kind of splodges, even though 
you know, the candelabra doesn't really look like that, but there's something about them <laughs> I'm enjoying. All right, I might just leave that as that. <laughs> so that's the sort of thing that I'm going to be doing this morning. Just playful, low pressure, not really expecting anything of myself, of my artwork, but enjoying the process. And then at the end, when I've got, you know, five or six or however many, and I've let them dry, I might cut them up. I might stick them into my sketchbook, but I will also take note of any shapes, any passages, any moments that I'm enjoying. And it's just a warm up for me. It's a sort of getting going after a pause. I think it's important to be, you know, like a kind parent to your creativity and not expect too much and not put too much pressure on what something looks like. I'm here for the process. <laughs> not the outcome. So these are my finished experiment studies and I think I did six in the end and this is the order that I did them in so this was the first one I did and the second one and I often find that when I'm doing things like this I develop a freeness and a looseness the further I go into it and there is something that I quite like about these last couple there's a sort of boldness and a playfulness and I'm enjoying how the shapes and the ideas sort of simplified as I went. So there we go, very quick playful studies vaguely based on a candelabra but I can see that there's something beginning to happen here with some of the shapes and some of the lines and some of the kind of compositional ideas that I'm actually really enjoying. And, you know, it was in a half hour play about, maybe a little bit longer, but not very much longer. And it just got me going. And now I feel like I've got something to respond to. So this is like the starting doorway. And now I just need to go through the next doorway and the next one and the next one and see where it goes. So there we go. I hope that was helpful. If you're wanting to develop your own sketchbook practice, you may want to check out my online classes. I've got a few available. They're all about developing your own personal approach to using a sketchbook. They're short classes, they're instantly available and my hope is that they're playful, experimental, but they also provide ideas, techniques, wisdom to help you create a sketchbook that feels exciting and interesting to you.